Hi, did you think that there could possibly be a contender to a dumber idea than solar roadways? Putting solar panels on the road and driving on them. Well, I think we have a solar contender. And thanks to all the people who have sent this in to me over the last, it's been going for a couple of months now, but it just made the news rounds again. I bring you solar freaking roadways. Yes, solar panels could be installed in the spaces between railway tracks in World First. Swiss startup makes first attempt to deploy solar on railways. Swiss startup Sunways introduces World First solar panel carpet for railway tracks. The startup startup claims that this system can cover 50% of the world's railways. <laughs> Sorry, I just can't help myself. I'm just sitting here thinking about it and I'm just... <laughs> Anyone who sees this just knows, like, <laughs> putting solar panels on roads was a stupid idea. I've been covering this for the last decade. Yes, solar freaking roadways are still going. The grift has been going for more than 15 years. I think it's like 16 or 17 years now. I think 2006 they started. They still got a Department of uh, Transport contract anyway. Let's not go into that. Uh, gr grift is real. This is yet another grift. This startup called uh, Sunways. They've milked $430,000 from the government to do this pilot where they're going to put solar panels on railway tracks. You have to have like no lived experience at all <laughs> to have never been near a railway track, like especially when trains are going past, if you've ever been in underground railway tunnels, stations and things like that, like it is one of the most dusty environments possible and one of the most high, high vibration environments possible. What are two things solar panels don't like? Dust, vibration. Oh. Sunways claims the country's railway system could generate one terawatt hours of solar energy annually, which is about 2% of Switzerland's overall electricity requirements. We'll look at this in a minute, where to put the panels. It's not on the railway tracks. Sunways intends to broaden its reach in the upcoming years. They always say this, oh yeah, we're going to expand in all these other countries because it's a startup. They have to sell themselves. We're going to generate one terawatt hours of electricity. We can solve all the environmental problems. And government's just, oh, oh, here, please take our environmental money. Oh, pilot project will focus on Western Switzerland's public railway system close to the Boots train station. We'll look at this location in a minute and it will cost Cost around uh, 400,000 uh, Swiss francs or $437,000 for this pilot program. <laughs> just like, give me the cash and I'll flush it down the toilet. And just like all the failed startups in solar roadways, because every one of them has failed, I've covered them in all my videos. Pilot programs have epically failed. Every single one of them for the exact same reasons myself and everyone else thought that they'd failed. It's just, <laughs> it's inevitable. But of course, uh, Sunways claim that their panels are more durable than conventional ones. <laughs> you think? Where have we heard that before? You remember the uh, Netherlands, uh, the solar cycle path? Yeah, this is how they ended up with just bikes riding over them. You remember that system in China? The panels got like broken and chewed up within a couple of days of <laughs> their installation. Uh, oops. And then people stole them. And look what happened to the French Watway project. You remember, this was like the largest road contractor. This was the best shot at solar uh, roadways. And this is their system. It just failed. And then there are all the articles about how the France's solar roadway experiment just epically failed. They got duped into <laughs> spending money on this. It's just unbelievable. It's happening again from this uh, Swiss company called Sunways. And yes, they've got a video. We cannot legitimately continue to generate electricity as we currently do. Yeah, okay. So let's use solar panels and well, let's just put them on roofs or in or like over the railways instead of under them. And let's meet the team, shall we? Here's the founder, Joseph, Joseph uh, Scuderi. He's an entrepreneur, of course he is, marketing, of course. Let's go over to his LinkedIn here. I help companies to cultivate their customer relationships and to carry out communication actions by establishing a strong emotional climate because our acts of purchase depend 80% on our emotions. The tell is right there. 
<laughs> They're preying on government emotions and uh, governments wanting to virtual signal to spend their, you know, the tax dollars on all these ecological, you know, renewable energy sustainable solutions. So they'll just give pilot money to anyone who comes along with a fancy uh, presentation and they'll just, just hand money over like candy. Here you go. So he's got 25 years of experience in marketing. Um, and well, I'm sure he has, right? I'm sure he's a great marketer. Hey, he managed to get money out of the government. Good on him. Hat tip. Let's have a look at the video. There's, there's no sound. So we'll just, uh, let's just run this. New solar tracks. Scuderi marketing services. <laughs> It's right there, marketing, right? Anyway, the whole idea is actually, like the concept of how they're laying them is actually quite good, right? Hats off, check check this out, right? They, they use like these little um, bars that come out that then press against the tracks. I don't know how much tolerance there is in there. So they come out of the back of the train like this, right? So it's a really good method for laying this and they can pick them up. Because one of the first things you're uh, going to be saying is, well, how do you service, like if you need to service the track, you need to re-ballast the track, you need to clean it, do whatever, do even ballast in nearby tracks, the dust is all going to come over. But there you go. So they've got a solution for laying them down. They'll have a specialized train that lays them down and then it will um, and another one, they don't show it here, but they have another one apparently, well, another method to actually pick them up like this. You remember how I said the first thing is <laughs> that causes problems for solar panels is vibration. Um, you know, you have to like make sure they're transported uh, properly so that you don't get micro cracks. Once you start getting micro cracks in the silicon, your efficiency, your panels can drop and they can even completely fail. One of the highest vibration environments possible is on a railway track when it's like suspended on these arms like it's it's not actually laying on the sleepers there right which is the wooden sleepers actually going across it's actually these things are just in free air and they're coupling via these metal rods into this metal box with these um the tabs that sort of you know can keep them and imagine if you get dust in there then you wouldn't be able to uh, like the the pins that when you want to lift them off the pins are all jammed because it's all just filled with dust and crap in there but the vibration is going to couple into these solar panels. It's just a micro crack in bonanza. Unbelievable that anyone would come up with this idea just from like a vibration point of view alone. Solar roadways is actually better because you can like and embed them in, like you can make them more flexible and you can embed them in solid uh, glass and like they're really you know, embedded in there and uh, cars aren't nearly, you know, they've got rubber tires. They aren't nearly as vibrational uh, prone as this, but you've already seen the problems with the vibration in the solar roadways stuff. The panels just get absolutely destroyed. I mean, <laughs> come on. Anyway, I do like how they've actually thought about how they're going to deploy them and how they're going to uh, pick them up. But once again, the problem is, how do you get the energy out of these? Where are the wires? Okay, yeah, the uh, train can come along and simply lay them all together. I don't see any wires joining these, or are they in there? Are they are the contacts in there like that, which go through like this? But I, I, I seriously, but then how do you get the energy out? It's it's not like one track is positive, one track is negative here, and you can just couple the power into the tracks. It, the tracks don't work like that. How are you going to get the wires in? and out. You've got to dig up your ballast here and get the wires in and out for however many. Then you've got to put like an inverter every 10 panels. Are they in series? Are they like what's what's no I like just the wiring configuration and everything else for these little piddly panels. Apparently they're a meter wide by maybe I don't know 1.2 meters long. They don't look quite square. So they're not too dissimilar to a regular size rooftop uh, solar panel and you want to lay these things down and have them suspended between these vibrational, any any mechanical engineers in the audience, please leave it in the comments down below how ridiculous this idea is from a vibration coupling point of view. It's just an absolute showstopper right there. So vibration, absolute showstopper. And then the wiring, getting these things in and out, if you want to do maintenance on the uh, tracks or whatever, you're absolutely screwed because then you'd have to dig up all the wires and everything again like you like how do you disconnect the things and as i said if dust gets inside those little you know levery things there you probably can't get in there and whoop and lift it back out or whatever it's probably gets jammed and it's just oh goodness and then of course the panels are reflective 
you've got train drivers who are trying to see in front of them and then you've got these giant reflective solar panels. So in May, they're going to use the pilot and do a pilot project, 300 foot stretch, and uh, the scheme faces skepticism from the International Union of Railways. <laughs> no kidding. Swiss Info reports, which has suggested the system could pose a fire risk, but Sunway says that built-in sensors will ensure the panels continue to function properly. How do the built-in sensors, like how do they work thing? Or how do they get the information back out to some monitoring system? Ah. <laughs> the company says it's developing a way to melt snow and ice that gathers on the panels. No, 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 no. You never go full brusaur. Everyone knows this. Here are the brusaurs out shoveling snow off their solar panels that are supposed to be able to have built-in heaters that remove the snow. <laughs> You never go full Bruce or, <laughs> but it looks like they've done it. And again, the International Union of Railways has raised concerns about micro cracks in the panels. <laughs> Even the, like the railway union, who knows nothing about solar panels, they're going, oh yeah, I think these things are going to crack. And then they've got the risk of forest fires as well. Is that because of uh, I don't, overheating, uh, reflection, things can fall on the tracks? I, I don't know how forest fires can start, but they think it's a real concern. Fair enough. And possible driver distraction caused by reflections. To prevent reflections from glaring into dri train driver's eyes, some ways claim that their panels are more durable than conventional ones. What's durable got to do with reflection? They still have a lot to prove. Yeah, you think? No, this is going to bet every dollar you've got that this fails epically. <laughs> Then the other thing I mentioned, in addition to the vibration, you've got dust, of course. <laughs> Everyone's lived experience. Have you ever been in a like a, a underground railway station? It's everything is just covered in dust. Dust can come in many different types. You can get brake dust from the actual, uh, you know, brakes on there. They've actually got disc pads. Here's an actual photo of a brake pad on a train, on a commuter train. And these things, they have to stop. And then you've got like the uh, cantenary uh, system overhead uh, wires and stuff. You get little, like eventually they wear and you get things falling down then you can get uh, the actual rail wear as well you can get rust uh, particles and everything flies up uh, ferrous and they're actually metal conductive dust as well here's a study of all these look iron like <laughs> you know silicon and you can get uh, apparently they put like sand on the uh, tracks as well that can uh, create in some areas that can create uh, silica dust and it can just uh, spray everywhere like uh, gypsum soot zinc and <laughs> get what copper and all sorts of stuff right there's all sorts of these um uh, dust particles just w waiting to get embedded on your solar panels and in your wiring and everything like no and then you've got more stuff like what's called a uh, fugitive uh coal dust if you've got like if you're transporting uh coals you know, like we get those trains coming through sydney uh for example it's that's a huge problem as well let alone other uh you know stuff that they're actually uh hauling and things and no uh, come on Seriously? So here's a ballast cleaning machine. It actually picks up and like it cleans the uh, ballast and look at all the dust coming out of it like this as the train goes along and all the vibration. <laughs> right? Of course, they would lift the panels before any of this happens. But even if you did it to a line that's next to a love, another line, because usually you've got multiple li like tracks, it's, it's all just spewing out. <laughs> look at all. They actually replace the ballast underneath the tracks and stuff like that. This is all regular maintenance operation that, uh, you know, uh, railway lines go on. Look at this, right? Sure, okay, you rip up the panels, but then how do you, how easily do you rip them uh, back up and relay them um, it, when they're all got to be connected? Like every panel has to be connected. Like, I, I just, I, come on. And just imagine if you had the, the wires on the side of the tracks, all the embedded wires and stuff like that, trying to get out from your solar panels. When you have these machines come along, you have to rip up all the wiring as well. And here's more. Here's actually an ad for uh, mask uh, mask uh, protection that the uh, line workers actually uh, use. <laughs> Imagine if you had your solar panels over here on this on this track right on the right hand side. You you just know. You're absolutely screwed. You can just get a sense though for the scale of maintenance required on train lines and the abuse and, and like you want to put solar panels between the tracks i don't know leave it in the comments down below is it dumber than solar roadways it, it it's certainly a contender and yeah there'll be the fanboys in the comments oh but you know the wright brothers they told them that they couldn't fly and well they did and well it's just all you have to do is put money into it you've got to spend money into researching stuff like this no no you don't. 
Here's why, okay? Before you spend money on solar freaking roadways, solar cycle ways, sunways, bloody train tracks here, let me show you, okay? This is where they plan on installing this Boots, Boutez railway station in, in Switzerland, okay? It's, look, right? Look at all this land around here where they could put solar panels. Look at, look at it all. Look, this factory over here has solar panels on it. Where are all the solar panels on these roofs, right? Where are, look, look at all these roofs that they could put solar panels on. Look at all this land they've got beside the railway line and the road here. You don't need solar panels on the row on the road on the railway line really this is where they're going to install it i kid you not and uh, i can see why because it's end of the line right it's it, it's a terminal uh stop here right so it stops here so they don't have you know through freight train traffic here so they get they've chosen I mean, of course you're going to choose right the best possible uh place i don't know maybe along here Perhaps, so like it's a single line. And then how much downtime are you going to have if uh, these things fail, cause problems, or you have to rip them up every time that you want to uh, like just maintain the tracks or do whatever, um, then you've got to rip the whole things up and then replace them. Like the downtime alone is just ridiculous. Yeah, so don't talk about solar freaking railways or solar freaking roadways until you have covered every single rooftop with solar panels because it doesn't matter how much money you invest in solar roadways or solar railways so this some ways rubbish here it is always always going to be cheaper order of magnitude cheaper even to simply install them on the roof they're going to be an order of magnitude more reliable orders of magnitude more reliable to simply stick them on the roofs or even above the roads you could put you know a little town here you could have i don't know you could have a solar cycle way with the panels over the top shading like they do in like south korea oh they've actually got a new video south korea's solar power bike path here it is this is from donkeys years ago i put this in right here's an example they don't put them on the roads look they have a cycle way here's the footage that we've seen in previous videos don't put them on the roads and drive cars over the top of them or have them on railway tracks and drive uh, trains over the top of them just have a cycle way like this the maintenance is zero the south koreans know how to do it Look at this, that goes for like 25 kilometers or something like that, I think. So to put them on this railway line here, just stop it, stop it. Put them on the roofs, put them on the fields, put them beside, have a canopy going over the top of the bloody railway if you want. It's just so dumb. Just, just stop it, please. <laughs> but as long as the money keeps flowing from the governments for these sorts of innovative solutions, then yeah people companies uh, startups will still continue so once again hats off the money's there they've come up with this idea and they've, they've taken the money and well yeah but as the brussels have shown you can have like more than 15 year career just grifting off government money and, and getting funding yeah nah that's just an epic epic fail sunways just no and check it out this is like the actual track it's going to be laid on giant poles and wires like you've literally got inherent shading over the top of the, <laughs> the where you're going to put your solar panels you've already i've already done a video on how just the just the guy wire holding up my tv antenna dropped my solar panel efficiency by 20 percent and then you've got like other you know signs and other signals and and things you are inherently going to get shading from the overhead wires and the poles for you know x number of hours uh, per day you know it's not huge but it matters when you can put them on the damn roofs and they get no shading at all and they get no vibration at all and then like they last 20 years just like other regular rooftop panels easily and you virtually never have to take them down for to maintain anything but to put them on the tracks the train tracks or the roads instead of on the roofs they, it, why why are people giving them money scuderi marketing services that just says it all it's <laughs> come on anyway thoughts and comments down below please you know there's a ton of extra things which is going to cause this project to come a guaranteed it's just, it, it, just leave them in the comments down below of all the problems you can think about with something like this <laughs> ah! but there you go this is what 2023 delivered 
Solar freaking railways, of course. <laughs> Catch you next time. Hello.